Hi everybody, it is Nicole, the Side Hustle Diva, and today I have a video for you where I want to talk about different strategies for delivery partners. If you are new to being a delivery partner, if you may be a delivery partner for a while and you just haven't thought of some of these, uh, this is just a few of my strategies that I use uh, that help me, that have helped me through this summer. Um, and what I'm looking forward to going into the fall and winter months. And so this way it can kind of help you get an idea of, you know, maybe hit the ground running if you're new and you're deciding to do this, whether it be full time or part time. Okay. So, um, the biggest thing that I can the first and most important thing that I want to stress, okay? Obviously, you know, I think for most people, it's pretty obvious you're going to try and focus on heavily, like densely uh, populated restaurant areas uh, and places where there's a lot of businesses, um, but don't discount uh, schools. You know, high school, you know, school's gonna start in a few weeks and you don't wanna discount that. Because high schoolers, they order food a lot at lunchtime. And even throughout the day, and especially if they're at after school programs, they'll be ordering food to like six or seven o'clock in the evening, especially if they're at after school. Because then, you know, they're not going to be home in time to eat. So you want to always consider that. Just kind of stay in areas where teenagers stay near the restaurants where you would expect teenagers to order from so like if it's Mc like stay near mcdonald's or stay near subway or any place like that that is quick and easy like any kind of taco joints like if they're like a well chipotle is not on uber but if you use different delivery apps then chipotle is a big one subway is a big one taco bell is a big one burger king mcdonald's um here in my city, uh, we have a place called Garden Catering, which uh, they love a lot because like they have like they're known for their nuggets. That's basically what Garden Catering is is known for. They're known for their nuggets and their potato cones, and kids love ordering from them. Uh, so those are big. So all those places where they can get food fast, you know, they love fast food. They love like they love Chipotle. Um, they love Taco Bell. So think about those areas you may want to focus in. I would always recommend that if you are starting out, if you don't know what restaurants are popular, I would say find yourself a place near McDonald's. That's the old, like the easiest way. Pick a McDonald's that you think is busy and just sit there and see what comes in and then you can kind of go from there so that would be my first rule is that you know obviously find a densely populated area where there's a lot of restaurants and if you are unsure which restaurants are popular then start with mcdonald's and of course like i said falls right around the corner high school's coming so these kids they love ordering lunch they even order breakfast so from like 10 up until, like I said, six, seven o'clock, they could be ordering food all those times, okay? So that's it. So I would definitely consider where younger users are and what they're ordering. Like, notice the trends, okay? And, and that predominantly, yes, okay, depending on where you live, you may get, you may get kids that order a little bit higher end food, but that might be for dinner and they might be a little more affluent, you know, uh, so they're used to eating, you know, maybe a little bit higher priced ticket items, but that's going to be the exception. Like it's not going to be the rule. The rule is they're going to stick with fast food places and dessert places, places where they can get ice cream. That's a definite, that's another one. Okay. So that's that. Now, speaking of younger kids, maybe a little bit older, like college kids, the college kids in the summertime, I always look for when college is out and it's right around May, right? That's when school breaks. So between May and the third week of August, you have all your college kids home. If you know, so, so 
think about that, okay? So the college kids are home, some of them may be working, but a lot of the times, you know, they're hanging out, they're enjoying their summer, and these kids stay up late. Now, I want to also address something here, okay? Um, like I said, I live in near more affluent areas, okay? So this is why this strategy may work for me, but overall, I think even if you're not near more affluent areas, I think overall the trend is just across the board, okay? So um, so what I see is they're up late, and if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, okay, Gary's always talking about how the parents of like the younger generation, Generation Z, they would rather give their kids unlimited Uber rather than them have a car. So these kids pretty much have carte blanche on Uber, okay? As far as taking Ubers, and as far as using Uber to order food, okay? And I'm seeing that consistently. So think about that, all right? So they are ordering food whenever they want. <laughs> and in the summertime, like I said, they're up late and usually they're hanging with friends. So what you'll tend to see is they'll, you know, sometimes you'll get orders from the same house from different kids. You know, you'll get like one or two orders. They're going, I mean, those, those situations where you're getting two separate orders and they're going to the same address you want to like, that sucks because you're not getting more money. But if you're like me, like my McDonald's is very busy. So I don't get the, the very busy McDonald's here. They do not send us double orders anymore. You get one order. And then you go, and then as you're on your that on your trip, you're getting your request for your next McDonald's order. Usually, that's how I see it. So you could end up going back and forth to the same house, you know, a couple of times, or just from different places. So find where the kids are. Right, like I said, just just know. Okay, in the summertime, they're home from college. They will order food throughout the day. Obviously, you want to focus on your busy times between 11, maybe even 10.45, like 10.45 till about 2 p.m. That's your lunch rush, okay? Then you have your dinner rush, which is like 5.30 up until like 9.30. I know sometimes they say 11.30, but really it, it'll go up to 9.30. Then you'll have another lull, okay? So between 2 and 5.30, you'll have a lull. And then between like 9.30, so about 11.30, maybe 12, 12.30, you'll have another lull. You'll get orders here and there, but very few. So if you are looking to do this full time, I fully recommend taking advantage of the lunch and the dinner and late night, okay? If you intend to do this as a full time, even if you intend to do it as part time, but especially if you intend to do it as full time, lunch, dinner, and late night. Or if you can't do lunch, do dinner and late night, or maybe you can do lunch and late night, but you want to pick times where you're just going to, you're not wasting your gas. You're not wasting your time. You know, you might be able to take those couple hours as downtime, maybe take a nap or something like that, and then get back on the road. Okay. So what I've noticed is that between like 9 30, 10 o'clock, like from 10, 10, 10, 10 30, it gets very quiet. You know, and you pretty much can, you know, do whatever with your time at that point. Uh, I'd like to have always two apps running and I'm going to get into that in a minute uh, just to kind of keep maybe something coming in then. But I try not to waste my gas during that. I know I'm seeing it consistently at that time, like that two hour window, nothing's really happening. So it is what it is. But in the summertime after 12, or, or between like 1130 up until 3, 330 in the morning, you will see consistently orders. And on the weekends, depending on where you live, like I live in Connecticut, so the bars close at 2, okay? And I'm telling you, on the weekends, on Friday and Saturday night, and actually even on Thursday night, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, after 2 p.m., uh, excuse me, 2 a.m., it pops off. So be in an area where there's it's whether it's uh, a lot of bars whether it's a college something find a place where there's a lot of bars and you know people are heading home and um 
and find a 24-hour McDonald's or someplace that offers food late night. Like I have Pyology here who on the weekends they're open till 3. Um, the diner is open till, the Norwalk diner is open till like 2 or 3. McDonald's. Um, then there's like a food truck that's open to two. So like we have a few selections that people can order from late night. And actually there's another place that's, that's offering late night food up until 3 a.m. too. So they've got like five or six selections late night. And I'm telling you, maybe around like 1.30 up until like 3.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're just going to get boom, 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 boom. Especially if you're at McDonald's because people, if they're drunk, they want to eat, and that's the fastest, quickest thing. And they will eat McDonald's like crazy and pizza. So McDonald's and pizza. <laughs> Think about that, okay? So, um, but yes, your your late night will be a busy time, okay? Midnight to three. Think about that. So that chunk of time. So you've got like about three or four hours at lunch, about three or four hours at dinner, and about three hours, four hours at the late night time. So it's about 12 hours overall where you can maximize your profits, your earnings. Now, I'm getting long here. So again, we're talking about kids, right? So I mentioned the college kids. Now, Still talking about college kids, but now we're going back into school this week. They are, they are moving into their dorms this week. Do you live in a college town? Do you live adjacent to a college town? Are you able to drive in that area? Is it in another state? Can you cross state lines and deliver from one state into the other? Think about that, okay? So if you live near colleges where there's dormitories, those kids are going to be ordering food. Those same kids that were ordering food in the summer... Well, now they're moving here because they're going to school here, you know, kids from other places. They're going to be doing the same thing that those kids in the summertime that live here were doing. And you will also see that consistently. These kids ordering foods to their dorms. And that's my, I, I picked up on that in the end of April and May because I actually got opened up to drive in another state that was previously closed off to me. And there's a few colleges there and I started to see a massive amount of orders going to the college campus. So that's what I'm focusing on going into the fall. So if you, if, like I said, this is for people that are new and you may not really see this, you want to just really maximize where the majority of your orders are coming and going to coming from and going to. Okay. So also, going back to my whole point of unlimited Uber, okay? So think about that. If it's an, uh, you know, think about that, okay? Like I said, most well-to-do families, whether they be middle class, upper middle class, wealthy, they will give their kids that unlimited Uber, okay? So you're going to see a higher concentration of kids ordering food through their apps and that's really what you want you have to look at it this way yes millennials are using the apps but also the 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 year olds which are younger those are gen z so those are not really millennials which are like the 20 somethings to the 30 somethings right so you want to really think about the younger kids the high school kids the pre like the middle schoolers up those are the ones that I'm seeing a predominant usage of Uber Eats and Postmates, okay? So we're going to go into Postmates in a minute too. So I want to, all right, so I got, I covered a couple points there. I want to make sure I'm getting all of them here. Okay, now above all of this, the most important thing, and this was a crucial mistake that I made because I was unaware what was happening. And I just recently, it, it became apparent to me. Okay, so I live in the downtown area of my, my city. I'm just like, you know, a half a mile from downtown. Um, and a big concentration of restaurants right there. And I would park in front of a apartment building that had like one of those like 
because there's, you know, you have to pay for parking in the city. Um, but it would have like one of those spots where it was just like, it was like indented and like, you know, cabs and stuff could pull in there. And I would just pull in and I would sit there and it was across the street from the mall. The problem is, and I did not realize this, I had this problem two summers ago or my first summer. So back in 2017, my very first summer that I was working full time on Uber and I was sitting now, it does slow down a little bit in the summer. And that's the reason why I am sharing with you about late night, late night being crucial into getting your minimum amount for the day and then some, okay? That's why, you know, if you're doing it full time, you have to figure out those, you have to do those three, those three time frames in order for Uber to work for you, okay? So what was happening was, I was sitting in this spot because it was out of the way. It wasn't like super crazy busy, but I was only like a thousand feet from the closest restaurant, not even a thousand feet, less than a thousand feet. I was like maybe five, 600 feet from that restaurant. It was just a matter of turning around the corner. However, the spot that I was in was a complete dead zone. I could, I wasn't really getting signals. I really wasn't getting strong cell phone signal and I didn't know it. And the only way I discovered it is because the last week, I think it was, I was sitting in the same spot and I was trying to watch a video and my video was just spinning, spinning, spinning. And I was like, oh, like nothing. My apps weren't working. And I realized that my data was not working in that spot. So make sure that you are not sitting in front of any place that might be jamming cell phone signals, okay? And in particular, actually, because when I think about it, the building that I park next to is where Indeed is, okay? So some of these, a lot of these businesses, I work in a financial area, okay? A heavy financial area. It's like all financial here for, for the most part. And a lot of those businesses, and even in the next town over, a lot of those businesses will block any cell phone, like, because they want it, like, people that work for their companies, they can't use their cell phones in their, um, in their office. Like, they usually have to go down to the lobby. And even then, it's still kind of sketchy. So make sure that you are not parked near anything that will prevent you from getting your pings. Make sure you're in an open area and you're getting good data and strong signal. And that is the most important thing because let me tell you, I parked in that spot like for weeks, for weeks, and I could not figure out why I was not getting the amount of pings that I was getting when I first started. And I, I mean, it was so crucial and it was so devastating to my finances that summer. I mean, it caused a lot of problems for me. And I was completely, completely clueless of it. Had no idea. And I just figured that out two years later. Okay. That is the biggest piece of information I can share above everything else because if you don't have a signal none of those strategies that i've just shared with you are going to work now the final thing that i'm going to share with you for me all this is working personally is to use more than one delivery app of course i would suggest if you're new get used to one platform first get used to it know all the nuances get used to driving around in your area and then what i would recommend is seeking maybe another driving platform, another delivery platform, whether it be Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, whatever, you know, maybe sign up for Instacart and shipped also. Those, you know, you can kind of juggle differently. But um, I would certainly pick at least two food delivery apps. Now, I have delivered on Grubhub. I no longer use them. I really don't like their whole platform. I don't like their whole thing and DoorDash is very similar to that and those two companies will give preference to people who are able to schedule themselves like full-time and they adhere to that schedule then those people will get preference for catering orders now if that's something that you want to do that's all fine and good but you're gonna have to um, prioritize those companies above everything else I'm not willing to do that. I'm, a, I'm very somebody who does not like to be committed unless I choose to be committed. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, I just 
choose not to do that. Now, DoorDash does have the option of Dash Now. So if there is availability in your area and you can sign up to Dash Now, I would strongly suggest doing that. The only downside to that is that you cannot, or at least I haven't figured out uh, how to actually like pause your Dash without ending your Dash, okay? So you may end up having to like decline door dashes because you've accepted an uber okay and you know it's not always a perfect thing where they'll come in staggered they don't do that a lot of the times you'll see you'll get bombarded with orders and sometimes i've been on three apps and all three apps will send me orders and i'm just like oh i don't know what to do so i recently was finally approved for Postmates. I had been waiting for Postmates for like a year. I signed up with them a year ago and they just were not available in my market. They are now open in my market and I'm actively working for them. This is my second week on their platform, actively working for it. And I have to honestly say, this is the easiest way for me to juggle Uber and to juggle Postmates. And both of them have like really good late night from what I'm seeing. And you gotta remember Postmates has like um, Taco Bell, Burger King and uh, those places, you know, kids like to order from those too, you know, and also, you know, there's Popeyes on both of them and KFC. So these are things to really consider. And what I'm finding is that if I get a Postmates, I turn Uber off right away and I go through the Postmates. And when I'm getting close to my destination, I turn Uber on and I see whichever one comes in. I'm able to manage those apps much better than I was trying to manage Uber and DoorDash or Uber and Grubhub or whatever. So for right now, those are my suggestions to you if you have Postmates in your area because you'll notice that the apps work very similarly to each other and it's very easy. And they have bonuses. They throw bonuses at you on a lot of orders, especially during peak times. So these are my suggestions. Um, I hope that they can help you get started on here because, I mean, even though I looked for a lot of different information when I started driving Uber, it really wasn't very, you know, it, it stuff like this wasn't out there. And uh, there is a lot of good strategies, but I think a lot of people just don't share their strategies because they're afraid that like, you know, they might work in a very busy market and somebody's going to take their strategy and move it on their territory. But, you know, there's plenty of people using these apps and ordering food. And that's why I recommend using two different services. And the best thing about them both is they both have instant pay and Postmates does not limit how many times you can pay yourself out and you get your money when you want it right then and there within seconds. And that's the best thing. So I hope that you find these different tips that I've mentioned to you helpful. And if you do find it helpful, please go ahead and give it a like. Also, uh, I did not mention at the beginning of the video, please subscribe if you like this. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and comment below. And if you think somebody else can value from these tips, then please go ahead and share it with them. Thank you for watching. And I hope you all have a great day. Happy uh, delivering all that stuff. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.